hi, we are now going to give a reduction from 3SAT to a graph coloring problem, which is called 3Color. So we are going to show that if 3Color is computable efficiently, then also 3SAT is computable efficiently. If you have a graph, then a three coloring of the graph is a coloring of each node of the graph using at most three colors, such that no adjacent nodes have the same color. So for example, this is a valid three coloring because every pair of adjacent nodes have different colors. And this is not a valid three coloring because, for example, this edge here has the endpoints with the same color. The three color problem is given a graph, can the graph be three colorable? Okay. So here is an example G, uh, can this graph be three colored? And the answer is yes, you can put the colors like this and the only two nodes which have the same color are not connected. So the graph is probably three colored. What about this graph H? Can it be three colored? Well, this graph uh, cannot be three colored because uh, it consists of four nodes, all of which are connected. So if you use uh, three colors, then some two nodes will have the same color, but every two nodes are connected, which is not valid. Again, people believe that the three coloring is difficult, but nobody can show it. So instead, what we do, we show a beautiful proof that if three color is solvable efficiently, then also three sat is solvable efficiently. And again, we are going to give an algorithm R that on input a formula phi computes a graph G phi such that the formula is satisfiable if and only if the graph G phi is three-colorable, and R should run in polynomial time. Why is this enough to prove the theorem? It is enough to prove the theorem because if some algorithm C uh, exists that solves a three-color in polynomial time, then this new algorithm C R of phi will solve three sat in polynomial time. You get your input formula phi, you want to know if it's satisfiable, you feed it to R, that's gonna create a graph G, and you feed this graph to C, okay? And because the graph is three-colorable, if and only if the formula is satisfiable, this algorithm is correct. So, here is the definition of R, and this definition is involved, uh, and it's also very nice. We're gonna have three special nodes in the graph, which are gonna call the palette, just like the painter's palette, okay? Uh, they're done like this, and we're gonna give names to, to these nodes, uh, true for, T for true, F for false, and B for base, a, a special color which will have a special role in the graph. Then also for uh, each variable, we're going to add uh, two literal uh, nodes, x and not x, connected by an edge. And for each clause, we're gonna add six close nodes with a strange gadget in this way here. We will see what this thing does. And we need to uh, connect these gadgets. So for each variable x, you're gonna uh, connect uh, both um, x and not x to the base color in the palette, okay? And for each clause a or b or c, you're gonna put this gadget uh, here. So these six nodes here is what I had before. Now I'm explaining how they're connected to the rest, okay? So if, if the clause is a or b or c, they are gonna connect these three nodes here in the gadget to the literals in the clause, as shown here. And you also connect uh, um, the nodes to the palette in a certain uh, way, okay? Uh, so the way is shown here and uh, it will uh, uh, be shown uh, later why it's done that way. 
Okay, so here is a specific example of a graph. So it's a formula with just two clauses. Okay, so um, we have uh, this portion here corresponds to the first clause, x or y or z. And in fact, uh, I connect this node here to x because x is here in the clause. Uh, the second node here will connect to y because y is here. And this third node here will be connected to z. Okay. Uh, in this other clause here, I, for example, not x. Okay, so this node here is connected to not x. Then I have a, a not y. So the second node here is connected to uh, not y, and this third node z is connected to z, to z. Okay, and then um, all these uh, nodes here of the variables are connected to the base color in the palette, as you can see here. They all go here. Okay. And the closed gadgets are connected to the palette in that strange way. Okay, so we have to prove that the formula is satisfiable if and only if this graph is tricolorable. And before proving this claim, we're going to make some remarks and we're going to prove a fact that will be useful later. So what is the idea of this proof? Uh, the idea is that the color of the node T is going to represent true, and the color of node F would represent false. Okay. So first of all, we know that in a three coloring, all the variable uh, nodes must be colored either true or false. And why is that? Well, it's self-evident because uh, they are all connected to B. Okay, we cannot use the color B because I have edges from B to every literal in the graph. Also, X and not X must have different colors because they are connected. So I cannot put both true and false. Okay, so I can uh, translate a three coloring of G into a true false assignment to the variables of phi. Okay? Because X and not X have different colors and they do not use color B. Okay, and here is the main fact which explains uh, why the closed gadget was done in this way. So here is a closed gadget, and we claim that this graph here is tricolorable if and only if either A or B or C are colored true. So, uh, in other words, this is implementing the OR in a clause. Okay, and specifically, each triangle in this graph. Uh, um, computes or, implements or in some sense. Okay, let's see uh, why that's the okay. case. So let's uh, do the proof of the forward direction. Let's suppose uh, by contradiction that uh, A, B, and C are all colored false. Okay, then let's ask ourselves which color. Uh, um, can P have in a valid three coloring? Well, it cannot be B because I have this connection to B. Okay, so it, it has to be either uh, um, red, either red or uh, green. Okay, so if P was green, then one of these two nodes here would have to be red, which would contradict uh, uh, the edge. Okay. So the only option is that the P is colored red. Okay, by the same logic, now the same triangle with P and C, which are uh, red, that would force um, Q to be red as well. But this uh, uh, violates the edge from F to Q. Okay. Okay. So I show that. Uh, um, if the graph is tricolorable, then it's not possible that uh, A, B, C uh, are all uh, uh, false. One of them has to be true. Okay, and there is even uh, another direction that uh, you can sh you can can show. Um, you can show that uh, um, if uh, A, B, or C are colored uh, true, then the graph is uh, tricolorable. And you know you can you you can use the same logic as before, or you or you can just uh, uh, exhibit uh, um, all the possible colorings of the graph. Okay, so if you go through 
them um, here at the bottom are all the possible ways in which you can color uh, the notes okay and for each of them the graph will be three colorable so you know if you have uh, um, true false false then the whole graph is three colorable okay so given this, we can now prove this claim that the formula is satisfiable if and only if the graph is three-colorable. Here is the proof of the forward direction. We're going to color the palette uh, nodes using, uh, um, you know, true, false, and blue, green, red, and uh, blue. And then we're going to suppose that phi has a satisfying assignment. Okay. Okay. So we're going to color the literal uh, notes uh, true or false accordingly, based on the assignment. And this is possible because uh, uh, they don't touch uh, true or false in the palette. And we're giving different colors uh, from X and not X. Okay? And then we're going to color uh, uh, all the closed notes using the previous fact. Okay? The fact that we just showed okay this is possible because every close gadget will have uh, um, will touch uh, some node which is uh, true and we just argue that then you will be able to uh, color the close uh, close nodes okay each close will have some true literal and so you, you can apply the previous fact uh, in the other direction we are assume that uh, gf has a three coloring Okay, and we have to define an assignment to ensure that it satisfies the formula. Well, we are going to assign all the variables uh, through true or false according to the colors. Okay, and this is a valid assignment uh, because uh, uh, by the remark that we made earlier, x and not x are colored uh, um, either true or, or false, and they do not have the same color. And this has to give us some true literal per close, which means that the formula is, is satisfiable, is satisfied. Why is that the case? Because, uh, um, because uh, um, this is a valid tree coloring, then each uh, close gadget is colored correctly. And by the previous fact, uh, the only way to color correctly is when, the only case in which you can color it correctly is when some of the literals which are connected to it is green. Okay? So every clause will, have, uh, will be connected to a, a true uh, literal, so all the clauses are satisfied and the formula is satisfied. And here is the example from before. We have a satisfying assignment, x is false, y is false, and z is uh, 1. Okay? So um, here, here are the colors for the notes. Okay, uh, it's a sign that satisfies the formula, and here is a, a, a three coloring of the graph. Okay, so this uh, um, node here corresponds to the first clause being true, and this corresponds to the second clause being true. Uh, the coloring of this gadget here is possible because. Uh, uh, this clause here is connected to at least one true literal, which would be Z in this case. The coloring of this close gadget here is possible because this node here is connected to uh, this uh, uh, true literal here, not X. Okay, it remains to argue that R runs in polynomial time and this is uh, much simpler than the rest. Given the formula, we just write down this graph um, to write down the variable nodes and the edges. We just need to examine the variables. To add the closed nodes and the edges, we just uh, go through the, the closes. Overall, we do something which is uh, um, polynomial in the input length. And this concludes the proof that um, if three coloring is in P, then also three sat is in P. And we are going to conclude this lecture with uh, a nugget, a coloring nugget. 
So let us consider a, a variant of the coloring problem, which is called the planar K coloring. Okay. And uh, this is the problem uh, in which uh, you're given a planar graph, a planar graph, and you want to know if it can be colored with uh, K colors. So a planar graph is simply a graph that you can uh, write down on the plane without intersection. So, um, okay. Planar is not very important. Uh, now it's just a, a, a class of graphs which showed up in uh, practice and which makes uh, for a nice story for our nugget. Um, what we want to um, show is a strange behavior with respect to the parameter k. Okay, so let's first consider the problem planar to color. If I give you a graph uh, that's planar, can you know if it is uh, two colorable? And this is easy. Okay, so two color just means that uh, you know you start from some node, you color it uh, black, then you know all the neighbors have to be white. Okay, uh, the neighbors of these nodes have to be black and so on. So there is no choice, you just uh, uh, keep going through the graph in this fashion, um, coloring the nodes alternatively. And if you complete the graph, then it is a two colorable. If you ever get stuck, then it's not two colorable. You don't make any choice in this process. So it is easy, this thing is doable in polynomial time. What about planar three color? What if I give you a graph and ask you if it's uh, uh, colorable uh, with three colors? Well, we just showed, uh, we just uh, mentioned that uh, for arbitrary graphs, uh, uh, three color um, is uh, believed to be difficult and it is possible to show the same thing even for planar tr three color. So planar three color is believed to be hard. This is a variant of the proof that we saw. Basically, there is a way in which you can take any crossing of edges and uh, replace it with a planar graph. Okay, it's not important, but uh, it's a modification of the proof that we saw earlier. And what about planar four coloring? So now I ask you if the graph can be colored with four colors. And here, interestingly, the answer is yes. Every graph can be four colored. So it's a major result in mathematics that every planar graph can be four colored. And so it's interesting to see that the complexity, the difficulty, the hardness of this problem does not uh, behave monotonically with K, okay? So it's easy for two, then it's believed to be hard for three, and then it becomes a trivial for four. <laughs> Okay, so to uh, sum up, we have we saw polynomial time reductions from 3SAT to click, from 3SAT to subset sum, from 3SAT to uh, three coloring, and also from click to cover by vertices. There are many, many other polynomial time reductions. Uh, they form a, a fascinating web. And coming up with reduction is Art. Okay, there is no recipe for that. You have to understand the problem and create some gadgets and have some ideas. And the best proof that it is art is to look at this picture. And this concludes the lecture and bye now.